Hey, it's me, Bria, coming back with another Starfist Gemini vlog. This week I haven't been doing as much model work, although I've been doing more than I probably should be, given all the other projects I'm supposed to be doing. But uh, even though I wasn't doing as much work on, like, toys, I do still have some new toys. I've got a bunch of different toys I've been working on than have on the go. And this week I think it makes sense to show off the toys that really got this this whole making models thing going in earnest. Like I've got other models I was working on before these two, but working on these two was really the catalyst for me to start taking this seriously and diving back into it again. And that's the models for the kind of, I guess, titular characters of the story, the twins, the Geminis. Uh, we've got Sloane and Jet, these two cute little kids that if you've read any of, of what I've posted of Starfist so far, you can go to starfistgemini.com or lifeofbria.com to read them, you can see that uh, there's these two twins, they're learning Kung Fu up on like a mountaintop with their teacher, and there's some sort of like cultural beliefs going on around twins, and like one being good, one being evil, and the, the twins are sort of questioning that, and we're going to be, you know, diving into that sort of mythology and, and belief system in the story and what that might mean for people and, uh, you know, the traits that we assign to people, perhaps. Uh, so, uh, you know, I had to build these models because, you know, I've got a nice bank of, like, the, the Figmas, right? The, the SH Figure Arts, the nice poseable art dolls. They're realistic. They're one twelfth scale. They're, they've got the interchangeable hands. Great models. I love them. You cannot get a kid one of these. Like, you can get a kid. I bought, I tried buying the, uh, what was it? The, the Ken Sugimoto, the, the, the Pokemon kids, right? I thought, oh, that'll be like a little kid doll, right? So you could have like a Pokemon child next to your anime adult or whatever. No, it's an adult size figure that is child proportions. Absolutely useless. Can't use that. How do I pose that alongside a, a person? How do I get a little kid kicking a person in the head and I need to pose that at the right lighting at the right angle? It's not going to work. I'm going to have to custom build models of children to make it work to scale. So that's what I did. I ended up, uh, I started with Sloan, the kind of more straight-laced of the twins, a little more shy. Uh, they're a little unsure of themselves and they need more direction. I think they need to follow orders and instructions more and they're really afraid of doing the wrong thing. And so they are, they're the more kind of introverted one of the two. Uh, it's like a, a head from like a Frozen 2 doll from the dollar store that I pulled the hair off of, filled up with air dry clay, and then gave hair with like uh, cotton balls with uh, epoxy glue and I think a little bit of um, craft foam for the little curl they've got in their hair. Uh, this one, this is where I pioneered my swiveling shoulder and hip girdle. It's like a ball and socket joint internally that has the hips mounted and the shoulders mounted onto, uh, you know, the ball. And then they've got this internal rotation system in here too. This is like bionicle and like mini bionicle joints. This one's got a uh, mega blocks joints and Lego joints on it, on the arms and legs. It's got the, this is also where I first started doing the twisting the arm technology. So we've got ball and socket joints. Those are great, but this twist here, rotating the arm allows the socket to rotate and then work in different directions to give it a little bit more mobility. And I had to use like Lego joints, I think, on the toes. I wanted to have curling toes. These guys, they clock in at, I don't know, something like 26 or so points of articulation. Uh, pretty poseable, pretty nice. And of course, I had to do it again. So I had to make Jet as well, the other twin who's a little more extroverted, a little more uh, sure of themselves in some ways, but also like has a really hard time taking directions uh, you know, uh, they're a little more forceful and they, they kind of need to learn, I think, how to go with the flow a little bit more instead of their way or the highway kind of thing. Uh, a lot of the same stuff going on, but I was running out of Mega Bloks joints on this one and I wasn't copying joints at this point. So it's Lego joints all around with the exception of the Bionicle and Mini Lego. Same thing, frozen to head that I've given hair with Craft Foam. And uh, you might notice this one's holding a hoop because the last place I left off in Starfist, uh, the kids are, they're going to go up this tree and to get up it, they're, they're going to pull out a metal hoop 
the teacher gave to Jet uh, to use. And uh, it's all, it's, I want to work on this um, scene that I saw in a Kung Fu movie. And I, for the life of me, I can't find the movie again. Uh, it, it's where there's like these two twin type characters and they pull out a hoop and they can like swing each other around on the hoop and like they swing each other up over like a castle wall or something. It was really cool. I can't find the movie. I've been looking for years kind of off and on. I'm going to keep doing research. If, if somehow somebody who's watching this is, you know, unbelievable as it might be, more versed in kung fu movies than I am, I'd love to hear if you have any ideas about what movie you think this might be with two twins playing with a hoop. There's a lot of hoop play in kung fu. It's it's a common thing, I think, in Chinese acrobats, like doing hoop tricks and swinging each other on hoops, different sizes of hoops. It's all cool fun. There's a lot of movies that have hoop play in it, but it's a particular scene I'm looking for. And so I've got a, I got this little hoop that I, it's like a Playmobil hoop from like my childhood. I grabbed it from my mom's house when I visited last. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have the, the kids and see if I can do it on camera. Have them link up. I got two delicate hands. Oh, it's ugh, I'm not even going to keep trying. It's a good opportunity, though. Like, you can totally do it, but like on camera in the moment. Like, the hands come off because these ugh, are following the same system as your SH Figure Arts and Figma figures where the hands are interchangeable and you can plug them in and out. And I've got a nice stockpile of hands to use with these dolls. And, uh, you know, that way if I'm having to say, put a prop in both their hands, it's not actually that hard in the end because, oh, well that one came out. It's, it, it's, it, it's only mildly hard. There you go. So I can pose them up. They can both be holding the hoop. They can do all kinds of hoop stuff. They can have all kinds of hand positions. Open hand, closed hand, and yes, I'm aware a human hand can do these things too, but it helps when you're staging your little models to have at least approximations of the hand position you want to have. So I'm very pleased with a few different things I kind of pioneered, at least in terms of my own model making in these figures. You got the hip and shoulder girdle, the internal rotation, uh, the rotation of the arm, and the interchangeable hands. Their heads ah, are not quite to scale with what I'd like. They're just, just just slightly a little bigger than I'd like. It, that's okay. If you look at like Dragon Ball, you look at how Goku's drawn versus Bulma, like when Goku's a little kid, his head is way bigger than her head. So I don't think it's a huge deal, but I may end up making another set of heads with these two kids that just slightly scaled down and I can get the hair a little better. Like right now Jet's hair is not 100% as it appears in comic. It's like kind of close. Uh, I think ideally I'd have their hair as close as possible, but uh, honestly, I like Sloan. Sloan's hair worked out just great considering it's cotton balls. So uh, yeah, very happy with these kid models. They work perfectly. They're super, oh, that's, that one's hand fell off because interchangeable hands, but they are super poseable. You can do all kinds of cool kung fu poses with them. These are really nice toys to play with. Their hands don't actually fall off that much. It's just because I was fiddling with it there. Um, I love these little guys. They're really fun to play with. I still have to figure out, this one's got like a weird butt thing going on, so I was trying to do an air dry clay, uh, mount for like a, a stand. Uh, yeah. You know, like a, a toy stand, you can like shove it right up their butt and then, you know, mount them. I don't know, it sticks out a bit, kind of ugly, not crazy about it, might figure out something else. There are holes in the legs. I don't know. I, I'd rather, I want to dress these up in clothes, to be honest. I would like to make little adorable outfits for these guys. And oh yeah, sure, it goes in the leg. That's great. But what if they're wearing pants? It's not going to go in there. Unless they put a hole in the pants. That's, I don't know. I don't know if I have the heart to do that to a pair of pants that I'd make. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with my two twins. Uh, they are going to serve me well, whether or not I replace their heads. So I guess I should get going. That's it for me this week. But uh, I'll show you another model next week when I get some more going on. I got lots more I've got, you know, on the go. And I'm going to be a little busy le next week, so probably less model work happening. But after next week, ooh, it's model city as far as I'm concerned. So stay tuned. There's going to be lots of cool stuff coming forward. And uh, with any luck, new Starfist pages will probably start coming out in the fall, I'm hoping, depending on how our model photo, photo shoots go. All right, uh, talk too long. See you later. Bye.